fellow landscape slash nature photographers slash YouTube addicts. <laughs> right, where am I today? Well, I'm actually on Vancouver Island again. <laughs> Come to Vancouver Island quite often actually. Uh, the main reason being is that my parents live here, so I come to visit my parents. But also I love the, uh, I just love Vancouver Island, I love photographing here and exploring Vancouver Island. The, uh, the landscapes here aren't quite as epic as uh, the Canadian Rockies, but uh, there are an awful lot of great places to come and explore here that haven't been photographed uh, very much at all. And that's where I am today. I'm actually on the east coast of Vancouver Island near a little town called Parksville and then there's another one up the road called Colicum. And this area that I'm in now is a kind of a little hamlet it's called Errington. Now this particular area is called Triple Falls. I'm not quite sure why it's called Triple Falls because there's only actually two waterfalls here. Although one of them has kind of two tiers to it, so I guess technically it could be three waterfalls. Regardless, um, they're not huge waterfalls, they're actually quite small. I think the larger one is maybe 10, 15 feet high at, at best. Uh, but they're very pretty and I thought I'd come down here and, and see what I can find. Uh, the area is really hard to find. I've been here three times now and every time I get lost <laughs> the roads just go all over the place around here. I was also hoping to get some fall colour but uh, the, the fall leaves are pretty much they're done. Uh, most of the leaves have turned brown and I think that's it for fall in this area anyway. But what it does have going for it is the waterfalls have quite a bit of water in them right now because the rains have started again and the moss on the trees looks really quite beautiful. So I'm hoping to maybe get some mossy trees, mossy rocks and the small cascades. Might be a bit of a challenge, but uh, let's see what we can do. All right. So I made it to the lower falls. As you can see, it's quite pretty. There's a, this little cascade and then there's a, a few little steps that kind of go up and then another little cascade and then there's a, uh, a creek that goes for maybe uh, 100 or 200 uh, meters. And then there's another little uh, waterfall that I'll, I'll go to after this one. Now, the biggest challenge with this waterfall is trying to find something for the foreground. As I said before, I was really hoping for some uh, some nice fall color like yellow leaves with these big leaf maples uh, but they're pretty much done so it's just kind of brown but I noticed that uh, there's some really nice bubbles kind of swirling in the pool in the in the foreground here plus there's a little bit of a, a reflection of the waterfall even though it's broken up so what I might try and do is take a shot with the pond in the foreground and have a really long shutter speed and see if I can get that pattern of bubbles in the foreground there. Other than that, it would be really nice to find some, some mossy trees of some sort to kind of frame the waterfall. Uh, but I'll have to have a, a look for that composition. I'm not sure if I'll be able to find it or not. Most of the trees are kind of situated quite far back from the waterfall. Like over here, there's some uh, really nice ferns up on a hill, but I, I'm not sure if I can get a, a clear view of the, of the falls itself. Anyway, we'll give it a go, see what I can do. I've got my uh, 16 to 35 here, and I'm trying to... Uh, see, I'm just not sure if this foreground, if there's enough bubbles to really uh, add a, enough interest into the foreground. So what I think I might do 
is uh, use uh, an ND filter to really drag the shutter speed out uh, as long as I can. And perhaps I'll get lots of streaking in the foreground here. I'll have to experiment. But I'll also have to use a polarizer because there's a lot of glare coming from the rocks and on the water here. And I really want to add some contrast and color because it looks kind of dull without, without, without a polarizer. So I'm going to set up a tripod here and uh, experiment a bit, see what I can come up with. Okay, a few months ago, I talked about uh, a little bit about filters, uh, especially the ones from uh, Breakthrough Photography. Now, generally speaking, I quite like using the, uh, the screw-on filters. Uh, they're just a bit smaller to carry. Uh, the only time I ever use the larger square filters is uh, generally with my 14 to 24 millimeter lens. Uh, because that's the only filters that it will take with the holder. So generally when I carry these filters, uh, I stack them all together, just screw them all together, and then I have a couple of caps, female and uh, a male, that just fit on, the, on each side. Uh, they're made by uh, Kirk Enterprises. I'm not sure if they still make them. I, I assume they still do. These just happen to be 77 millimeters, uh, which all my screw-on filters are. There's only really the 70 to 200 that has a, a smaller diameter. I think it's uh, uh, 67 millimeters. So I use a step down ring with the 77 millimeter um, filters. But the, the, uh, the lens caps are really quite nice. They protect the, uh, the filters from getting smashed. So just recently I picked up a new filter from Breakthrough Photography, uh, another polarizer, except this one has uh, a three-stop ND filter built into it. Uh, the nice thing about this is that not only are you getting rid of some of the glare, say in rocks or leaves and such, but you can also uh, stop the uh, shutter down quite a bit more. There's been a number of times where I've used the polarizer to kind of slow the shutter speed down, uh, but it's not quite enough. So this has the ND filter built into it. And the nice thing about having it built into it, rather than adding an ND filter on top of this, is that you won't get any big netting with uh, wider angle lenses, such as the, the 16 uh, to 35. Uh, it's virtually the same in looks to the, the regular polarizer, except this one has um, a silver edge on it, so you can kind of tell the difference between the two. So when I stack these together, I can instantly tell which is which. The other thing about these new polarizers is that they've uh, redesigned the, uh, the outer edge on these. You may remember in my video, which I'll put a link up here to, uh, I did the, the, the mitt test. And I, I found the edges quite easy to get off, but again, that was in a kind of a controlled environment. Uh, supposedly some people were having trouble getting them off in, uh, in colder weather. So what Breakthrough have done to eliminate the problem is they have one, one of the rotating edges slightly wider than the, uh, the other so that it's easier to grip. So I'm going to give this new polarizer a try and see if I can really slow down the shutter speed to create some nice patterns with the bubbles in the foreground here. Let's see what I can do.
finding compositions around here is not terribly easy. Ideally, I wanted to find something with a nice foreground to kind of complement the falls. Uh, and I think I might have found something that's going to work. Um, there's a little uh, tree here or shrub of some sort, or it could be, a, oh, actually, I think it's a, might be a maple. I found this maple here and it has these sweeping branches kind of sweeping over the, the creek here. And I've able to kind of maneuver myself so that uh, I have the waterfall framed by these branches. So we have one, two branches kind of sweeping over. And then in the background, there's a, a tree that kind of mimics these two branches. And then also there's, also, there's a, a log here that's kind of broken off, but it kind of points towards the, uh, the waterfall. So I'm hoping all those elements combined will uh, translate into a compelling photograph. Okay, now the only uh, problem with this composition is that the, the branch in the foreground is very close to the front of the lens. So there's just no way that I'm gonna be able to get everything in sharp focus in, in one shot. So what I'm gonna have to do is a bit of focus stacking. Um, now the neat thing about the Nikon D850 is that it has a feature built in there where it'll actually automatically go through the steps of uh, focusing for you. Now, it doesn't actually stack the images in camera. You have to do that in Photoshop when you get back home. But rather than you manually focusing on different points in the image, it'll just do it automatically. Okay, before you start, you just wanna make sure that you're focused on the closest object in the frame. And then go into your menu and click on photo shooting menu. And then just kind of scroll all the way close to the end and you'll see focus shift shooting. So you just click on that and then there's a whole bunch of options here. Uh, number of shots, focus step width, interval until the next shot, exposure smoothing, silent photography, and um, if you want to put them in a folder you can do that. So number of shots. Uh, if you're doing macro then you tend to take more shots because the, the, the distance between each focus stack um, would be less because you have less depth of field or if you're using a wider aperture say f4 but in this case we'll just use 10. Uh, oops uh, the next one is focus step uh, focus shift shooting again if you want very narrow uh, steps for macro you go one uh, i'm just going to use uh, three intervals until next shot is good if uh, say you have long exposures in between it you just need time for the, uh, the the camera to focus onto the next um, the next step exposure smoothing if you have a, a change in your exposure during your shots and silent photography is when you uh, want to put the mirror up so we're going to put all these images into a new folder so they're all together and uh, just click start and uh, that's it it'll just start taking a whole series of images
I think I found another composition that I quite like. We've got the waterfall over to the right hand side and then there's bubbles causing water streaks across the foreground here. And then these branches above the waterfall are all kind of arching over, creating this nice flow from the waterfall around and then back, back down again. In theory, anyway, the idea is to try and keep the viewer's attention in the middle of the frame or in the frame. You don't want your viewer to be distracted by things on the outside of the frame to pull them out. You want them to be pulled in. But this looks beautiful. Now, I'm using the, uh, the dark polarizer again. And uh, I want the shutter speed to be quite slow for this one. So around four seconds at F11, F16, ISO 64. believe that I've been here all day <laughs> well it's starting to rain a little bit and uh, it's starting to get dark anyway so I guess it's time to uh, pack my bag and call it a day but this has been a, a really lovely day at these two little waterfalls here uh, I, I saw one person so anyway if you enjoyed this video be sure to give me a thumbs up I hope uh, you got something from them uh, I appreciate all the comments that uh, you guys give me. And uh, I guess until next time, keep shooting. All right, take care. Bye-bye.